Penny Morden yesterday <laughs> stood up in the House of Commons and um, said, don't worry, the Prime Minister's not hiding I'll, I'll under a that. desk. Ow, 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 ow. I mean, you know, you, literally cementing in people's vision mm. the idea of the Prime Minister cowering under a desk. So I had wondered... And all we know right now is, unless she tells us otherwise, that the Prime Minister is cowering under her desk and asking for it all to go away. Well, the Prime Minister is not uh, under a desk, as the... <laughs> she... I can assure the House that she is... that, she, with, with regret, she is not here for a very good reason. Complete break with Commons tradition. What they don't do in those uh, debates is repeat the insult. They never repeat it. It's, it's just not done. No. So, uh, so, to insiders watching that yesterday, that, that was a jaw-dropping moment. Then Morden, Jeremy that. Hunt, of course, stood mm -hmm. up, and as the Prime Minister sat next to him, dismantled trussonomics mm. in front of her and in front of all of the MPs. And that was and that was only after she just turned up. I mean, I thought Starmer's line yesterday when he said, what was it, um, the lady's not for turning up, because for ages she, she simply wasn't there. She, she, she came in and then she just left, mm. didn't say a word. It's, oh, it's painful to watch. Painful I mean, watch. all of this, you know, we're going to go for growth, 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 and we're going to do it because of these uh, this litany of tax cuts. Mm which slowly, every time she was asked about one of the measures, are you going to stick with that? I'm absolutely, absolutely going to stick with it. 24 hours yep. later, that goes. Mm. Um, you know, even Kwasi Kwarteng asked, are you going to stay as Chancellor? Absolutely going to stay as Chancellor. He yep. was thrown under the bus. Now we've got the corporation tax is going to go up, mm -hmm. even though that was, you know, considered a really important factor yep. in growth. Yep. Um, you All know, for we, naught. We already know about the income tax. The, the top rate was going to be abolished. That is no longer going to be abolished. We know that. But also that cutting of the basic rate of income tax by one penny. Yep. That's, That's now strong. junked yeah. as well. Yeah. I mean, nothing remains of trustonomics. No. So what remains of Liz Truss as Prime Minister? Well, nothing much. I mean, the Sun today, I mean, again, another uh, trust reporter, the ghost PM, and that's really what she looked like yesterday. She looked like a ghost of her former self sitting there. She gave that interview last night. We'll show a bit of that later. Um, not convincing at all, was it? I mean, she looked terrible, to be honest with you. Absolutely a terrible. Apart from all of the politics, mm. this dismantling of the promises that she made in her mini-budget, many of them are going to be a real concern to people. And the main one is what you mentioned 24 hours ago. Energy. Are we going to trust that the energy price guarantee is going to remain in place for two years? And it's not. And it's, it's not. It's been lifted in April. We don't know what will replace it, but uh, it's... No, it's the guarantee has gone. That was the... And that was, as you say, her big plank. That was the one thing she clung to, to stay afloat. Yeah. At least I've done this. I've given you two years of stability with your energy prices. Nope. No, nope, that's gone. We've got until April. And she kept repeating the £2,500 figure. You know, we've put in place mm. measures which mean that the typical or the average household won't pay more than £2,500 on their energy bill yeah. because of this guarantee. Mm. In fact, whatever question you asked, Liz Truss, that, that was, was the answer. Yes, exactly. Could have asked yes. her what the weather was. Where are you going on holiday? That, <laughs> exactly right, and that was the answer. Yeah. Now we're talking about potentially bills going up to double that. Five grand. I mean, that's frightening. So, well, Martin, Martin Lewis... Lewis yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> As we say in unison, <laughs> thank goodness for Martin Lewis, who will be here after 8 o'clock this morning. It's our main news. The Prime Minister saying sorry for mistakes which led to turmoil in the financial markets. She admits her tax plans have gone too far too fast. Well, uh, her brand-new Chancellor, shiny new Chancellor, has now scrapped nearly all the measures announced last month, as we've just said, and uh, he's warned that spending cuts and even higher energy bills next year are now pretty much inevitable. Liz Truss insists she will be the one leading the Tories into the next general election, but her premiership remains in deep trouble. A new poll gives Labour a 36-point lead. Good grief. Well, our political correspondent, Louisa James, is in Downing Street for us. Louisa, well, she's finally apologised. She did say sorry last night on camera. But what about resigning? She's still clinging on, isn't she? 
Yeah, she is still here and she says she is staying, having survived what has got to be uh, one of the most humiliating and frankly bizarre days of any prime minister in office. One of her fellow cabinet members forced to deny that she was hiding under a desk. Then the prime minister herself sitting silent and blinking as her new chancellor pretty much killed off her entire policy platform. The papers digesting it this morning are pretty brutal. The polls are catastrophic too. Uh, and as one rebel MP put it to us, it is over, isn't it? Why are we waiting? Well, the answer to that seems to be that unhappy MPs still can't seem to decide uh, if to move against her, when to move against her, how to do it, and indeed who could replace her. And so all of that, plus the fact that uh, this does seem to have calmed the markets, perhaps buys Liz Truss a little bit of time, but things are not going to get any easier. Jeremy Hunt uh, will gather the Cabinet here today and tell them that none of their departments is safe from spending cuts, so that could mean uh, cuts to the NHS, to education, to defence, uh, reportedly, uh, and that on top of uh, interest rates, uh, mortgage rates high, inflation are going up, we're going to get new figures on that tomorrow, and yes, we now know that energy bills are going to go up when that government support runs out in six months' time. So this particular a political storm will pass, but the cost of living crisis is here to stay. The PM is detained on urgent business. Walker's laughter as the PM sent an understudy to answer questions in the Commons, and nervous laughter as she tried to look to the future. I will lead the Conservatives into the next general election. Definitely. Well, look. And Liz Truss wasn't in laughing mood earlier watching on vacantly as her new chancellor tore up the mini budget she now admits went too far too fast i'm sorry uh, for those mistakes but i've fixed the mistakes i've appointed a new chancellor uh, we have restored economic stability and fiscal discipline but that's not what it feels like for many as they listened to the new chancellor the government has today decided to make further changes to the mini budget in a handbrake turn, he announced help with household energy bills will now be cut after six months, not two years. Spending on defence and even the health service could be next for the axe. There will be people who die of hypothermia over this winter because they are so frightened of putting the energy on. And it's not just for the poorest, it's for everybody. It's a complete shambles. Some, like mum of four becks, have already decided to keep the heating off so they can put food on the table. In 2020, I could heat my house and feed my children. Now I've got to like, try and, well, not choose because I don't choose, but I don't think she understands what she's doing. Labour now have a 36-point lead over the Conservatives in one new survey, their biggest margin in a quarter of a century, say the pollsters. In public, some Tories are still flying the flag for Team Truss, or at least team better the devil you know. We need stability at this point. Uh, we don't need yet more change. A change in leadership is going to create more instability and that will be bad for people at home. Liz Truss had the cabinet round for drinks last night to try to shore up their support. But amid more woeful front pages, how long will she be able to count on it? Louisa James, Good Morning Britain. Mm. So that is the headline on the front of the Daily Mail this morning. Um, on there, they use a line from their comment section on the front page. It's time for the wise men and women of the Conservative Party to decide whether the loss of confidence in mistrust is terminal. If it is, they must come to a solution and fast that can command the support of MPs and the millions of Tory voters looking on in horror. Mm. Well, looking the... on in horror. The this is from the friendly paper. The ultimate uh, man in the grey suit, the head of the 1922 committee, is going to see her again in the next mm. 24 hours, isn't he? Graham he's Brady. Graham Brady. He's already seen her once. He's going to see her again. And when we say he's going to see her, that's mm. code for... He's going to tell her her fortune, in effect. And he's going to tell her that people are saying she but, should go. Yes. That's, she should. What, that's what we what they imagine. Want, what they want her to do is to resign. They don't want to have another leadership. They can't have another leadership mm. competition. They can't do that again. I mean, the country wouldn't stand for it. So they want her to quietly go. And, but what they've then got to do is decide who takes their place. I find this idea of Boris Johnson coming back, which we'll be discussing later. Yes. I mean, it's a, it's a growing thing. Uh, there's a petition of, what, 10,000? has now been signed. 10,000 yeah. signatures. Bring back Boris. He's the only one who can save the country. Honestly, I th I, I've been a journalist for 50 years. I started when I was 16 in 1972. I've worked in papers and radio and television and news for a lot of the time. And I'm here. And I've never covered a story like this. I don't quite know how to react to it. It's just so bizarre. It's such an odd... 
odd experience. Well, I'll tell you who is going to react to it, and that's the Armed Forces Minister, James oh, Heapy. Heapy. Mm. I'd have to say, good for James Heapy for going into battle this yes. morning. Yes. And you wouldn't S expect anything less. Well, from yes him. yesterday's minister stood down, wouldn't do any interviews, but he is coming in to, yep. to, to take the flag. Indeed, and we will talk to the Daily Mail's uh, Andrew Pearce in just a moment about the friendly fire that the Prime Minister is getting from the paper and also the Mirror's political editor, John Stevens, about the fact that Labour are so far ahead.